Okay, continuing on. Um, <clears throat> now, I have mentioned a couple of times hybrid encryption. And uh, this is, well, this is using the, the two different types, symmetric and asymmetric, uh, both together using each where its strengths lie. Now, symmetric encryption is strong. We know how strong it is. Uh, by and large, uh, most of the symmetric encryption is... Uh, uh, we, we know how strong it is. Um, there really aren't any uh, easier ways to break it than brute force. Um, so, you know, we, we know how long it's going to take for somebody to try every possible key in any given situation. Um, it's, it's studied, it's mature, uh, pretty mature anyways. So, you know, there's not a lot of surprises there. Um, and it's fast. Uh, we, you know, we have, uh, found, uh, you know, the Feistel ciphers, computer programs, um, it can turn this stuff out pretty quickly. You know, there is some time involved, but it's, it's, you know, by and large, it's fast. Okay. Uh, but we have the problem of key management. Um, we have to distribute the keys. We have to share the keys. Um, uh, there's uh, an interesting problem when we get into telecommunications in terms of uh, group uh, traffic. Um, sending the same message to multiple individuals um, and uh, uh, all of them, of course, have to share the same key. And, and what happens when uh, somebody joins the group, well, you just send them the key, but when somebody leaves a group, you've got to re-key everything. Um, and uh, so, interesting uh, problems in, in that regard. Key management is key when you are dealing with symmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption, on the other hand, we don't have... Mm, the same problems. Let's let's put it that way. We don't have the same problems with key management with regard to asymmetric encryption, because of course um, the public key can be public. Uh, we want to attest to it. We've got the public key infrastructure problems that we talked about, but by and large, um, you know, we don't have the problem of key management. The private key can be private, should be private, is private to everybody, uh, except the one individual who knows it. So, uh, we've, you know, so that, that lays out the thing. Thing is, asymmetric encryption is very computationally intensive. We've, you know, we've got a lot of mathematics involved in it. Um, it's fairly heavy-duty mathematics. Um, it is something that we uh, need to put a lot of processing power and computer time into, and therefore it's slow. In addition, it's weak um, because of the, the mathematical relation between the keys there are uh, faster ways than simply brute force for uh, compromising, uh, for doing the cryptanalysis um, when we've got asymmetric encryption. Okay, uh, so, but we've got the two types. And, and so, we use them both where it's most appropriate. We, we rely on the strengths of each. We use symmetric encryption to 
manage uh, to to do the encryption, the bulk data encryption, encrypting a data stream, encrypting a uh, file, um, uh, you know, making making sure that we've got uh, that done quickly and with reasonable strength, so that. Uh, we know our secrets are safe. And we use the asymmetric encryption to distribute the keys. Because keys, for symmetric encryption, are fairly small pieces of data. It's not going to take very much time to... uh, to distribute those keys, to to protect those keys, to encrypt the key so that it can be sent over public networks. And of course we know that the person, uh, only the person whose public key we are using to encrypt the symmetric key, that's the only person who's going to be able to decrypt and extract the key that we're using as a session key for the semantic encryption. And of course, we can we can choose it randomly now. We don't have to manage it we, because we don't have a problem with distributing it. Uh, we can just randomly choose a key anytime we want, and that's generally what happens. Now, again, you know, once again, random, and of course, you know, all the problems that we discussed earlier with random are are still there. But at least we have solved to a certain extent, our key distribution problem. So we, that is, that is hybrid encryption. Again, it's, it's similar to what we talked about with digital signatures, that um, instead of uh, encrypting uh, the entire file that we want to verify, we take a hash and we just encrypt the hash. So we have the, uh, the system that uh, gives us a good possibility for uh, uh, securing, uh, authenticating the, uh, the data that we're dealing with. And we have the, the speed of a uh, strong, simple process to, to do the computation there. So, uh, hybrid encryption, um, basically, that is now used for everything. I mean, you know, like I say, when you sign on to a website, um, uh, the protection that's happening there is, is happening through hybrid encryption. You know, a, a key is randomly generated, um, it, and that key is shared with asymmetric encryption that key is then used as a session key to encrypt the entire uh, transaction with regard to passwords and, and that sort of thing. So, 